Sometimes without even realizing it, you'll put together a collection of some seriously powerful fragrances in your rotation. And that just happened to be what happened this particular week. A lot of stuff that can be quite overwhelming if sprayed pretty heavy. Um, I don't always wear the most beastly of fragrances, but for some reason, apparently I was just in the mood for them this week. It's week number 117. Stay tuned. Starting off on Sunday is one of the better independent fragrances to come out in quite a while. Um, some of you are familiar with City Rhythm Fragrances and you probably have smelled Miami Tropical Seduction a time or two if you are familiar. If you're not familiar, you should really get your nose on it. It's my favorite from the house. I have Rhythm and Pulse right there. There's Miami's tube. Right behind it is Manhattan. Probably the best signature scent from the house. But here, Tropical Seduction is a great name. It does have somewhat of a Miami Nights sexiness to it. It's got this coconut rum feel, but not a Virgin Island water smell in any way, shape, or form. This is much more rich and warm and boozy. It still has that coconut vibe. It has some fruitiness, but there's more of a dark floral tone here in the heart. There's some osmanthus and a few other, you know, kind of slightly earthier toned florals here that really kind of change it. Give it a little bit more character. Ground the scent not making it too bright and fresh. Um, the way I said it in my scent of the day, actually, Niles loved it. He messaged me about it. This is kind of a summer feel, but with the kind of cojones to cut through the winter weather. Because it's definitely got some balls to it. It's a 50% concentration. It sticks to your skin. It's a heavy oil. It wears heavy for being fresh. So it has a lot more density than your typical fresh fragrance for sure. Um, there's a lot of warmth. That booziness really adds a lot of warmth to take away some of the freshness at the same time. And projection is not overwhelming, but it's pretty heavy and pretty consistent. Definitely get your hands on a sample and try this one out. It's full bottle worthy in my opinion for sure. During the day, City Rhythm, Miami Tropical Seduction. And then when I got the shower, I don't know. I saw it sitting on my table. So why the hell not? I love wearing this one. It's my wife's favorite fragrance for the most part, and one of my favorites, hands down. It's a Haroff Signature Rose. Super intoxicating masculine rose fragrance, because it's got a lot of incense going for it. The Olibanum Tears. Very specific type of incense, and the sweetness isn't too heavy on my skin. I do get the variety of roses. I get some fresh Turkish rose. I get some darker, more jammy type of Bulgarian rose. I get a little bit of the oud, but it gives more of a warm wood smell than an oudy type of smell. And the sugar cane and the tonka bean that's found here to really provide the sweetness doesn't overwhelm, doesn't overtake. It's balanced pretty well in the base of the fragrance. I get a little bit of sweetness up top, but it's more so in the dry down and it's never too much. The incense pops off of my skin from start to finish. That is the most prominent note to my nose off of my skin. And I think that's why I like it so much. It's an intoxicating smoky rose fragrance if you haven't tried this one yet you really should out the shower zaharoff signature rose moving into monday things got a bit fresher actually got a few compliments from a couple random people as well as my wife for both of these fragrances because these are two of her personal favorites and during the day i started off with y edp so once it gets a little too warm i probably will shelve this one and stop wearing it as much i don't know why we're not getting any focus here there we go so, uh, sweet, cloying, and strong. If you spray it too heavy, I'm telling you, in the summer, it could be sweet, cloying, and too strong. But the spring and late winter, like I am now, late winter, about to transition into spring here over the next few weeks, is the sweet spot for wearing this fragrance, in my opinion. Because it cuts through the cold with ease, and it works well in slightly warm weather. I wouldn't call it hot weather with the kind of spring I deal with here in Colorado. But... Just, I mean, it's never a bad time to wear this fragrance. It's fantastic. I love to wear this in a more casual setting, casual apparel, t-shirt type of fragrance for me. But I mean, it can dress up a lot better than that, but it doesn't smell like 
the type of fragrance you would want to wear with a suit or a sports jacket or something like that. It's not one you'll ever really see me reach for in that situation. There's a few blue fragrances I would wear with a suit. This isn't really one of them. This has more of a casual laid back vibe. Compliment King. It definitely pulls in some compliments and uh, it's a beast. If performance is a number one to you, you probably have a bottle of this. If you don't, you should probably get a bottle. It's that good. Synthetic, sure. Powerful and smells great. It's all that in a bag of chips. During the day, with YSL Y, the Eau de Parfum. Then I'll got the shower. Old tried and true, this is pretty much what I strictly wear it for. Just around the house at night. I don't wear it out in public anymore. My wife loves when I wear it. That's why I've been wearing it more. The original Aqua de Joe. The other night, because sure enough, every time, every time I get out the shower and spray this and go see her, she's like, oh God, you smell so good. I said, you just like guys that smell like the 90s. And that cracked her up a little bit, because this is 90s. This and Tommy by Tommy Hilfiger are 90s in a bottle to me, because that's when this was curated. This is when this all-time classic was created in the mid-90s, and it's still a top-tier seller to this day. I think it's kind of the time to shelve it if you're looking to rebuy it and go with one of the flankers i stated that in the the video i did not that long ago about pass on these in 2022 this is one of them that i talked about i strictly wear it out the shower around the house because i do enjoy it and my wife absolutely is a sucker for this fragrance and uh so that's pretty much why i still keep it in rotation i exclusively wear it around the house basically just for my wife it's not one that i reach for to go out and about i'll reach for one of the flankers because i think all of the flankers are better than the original but there's no denying it's a damn good fragrance and like i said my wife loves it so gotta wear it for her. out the shower aqua de joe moving into tuesday this is the switch up so i haven't been wearing this one i both of these i've been needing to wear them i was in the mood god are they so good starting with during the day i went with carlisle finally sprayed this bad boy it's been forever it's still that it's the jam it really is so good sweet a little smoky resinous warm inviting it's got that crisp kind of green apple smell i get at the top but this this like sweet smoky resin quality that i kind of get throughout it adds it's a little bit of a thick kind of stickiness if you will i love this fragrance i love that about it it's one of those fragrances that when you don't spray for a while, you forget just how much you love it. And then when you spray it, you fall in love all over again. That's kind of the case with Carlisle. Like I said, the resinous qualities of it are what really stand out to me on my skin. A little bit of fruitiness up top, like I said, with that apple. But it's mostly sweet without being too sweet. Warm, resinous, and smoky. So it's very smoky on my skin. I don't even know if there's really anything smoky in the notes, honestly. Yeah, some Tonka bean for the sweetness. Saffron for that little bit of spice. Green apple. I mean, it's a tester bottle, so the notes are right here. But that Opinox Resinoid, I get a ton of that. It's kind of a bomb on my skin. And it's great. And it's absurdly powerful. Four sprays for me. The other ones are super powerful that I wore so far, but this is almost the most powerful fragrance i wore this past week because uh four sprays intoxicating alluring pulls them in wife's wife loves it get a sample and try this stuff during the day carlisle and then i got the shower why did i want to grab this not even a clue why i thought about it i guess i was just in the mood for some more rose i wore rose a couple days prior and i ended up going with moschino toy boy out the shower very random to wear these powerful fragrances out the shower for me but I was just in the mood. I don't know why. Unique, intriguing, strong, different. Not just because of the bottle. Not just because of the name, the scent profile. It's fresh, but spicy rose at the same time. I keep forgetting to look up the name of that other damn flower note that's in here. It's kind of adds this dark, almost inky floral type of quality to it. I keep forgetting to look it up so I can try to remember the name to that note. I know there's a a darker floral that's in here with the rose and like i said it's got kind of an inky quality in the heart to me on my skin that's kind of how it smells to me this stuff is great it was hyped up when it came out for good reason now you can find them pretty cheap 40 50 dollar range especially testers like this 40 some odd dollar range 50 bucks absolutely worth it easy on the sprays this stuff will overwhelm you'll go anosmic to it you'll think ah oh, i need to spray more three or four hours in when you got this big old scent bubble going on so 
let people around you let you know if you need to respray. Don't just assume because you can't smell it anymore. Because this stuff, like I said, you can go anosmic, you'll think it's gone, and you got a big scent bubble. Because five to seven sprays is a lot with this fragrance in my experience. But out the shower, some fresh and spicy rose, Moschino Toy Boy. Moving into Wednesday, the quiet room filler. This is the silent assassin when it comes to projection. That's what I think I'm going to dub this. This is the silent assassin because I will get some olfactory fatigue and I'll still be able to smell it, but it, it won't smell that strong to me. But based on what my wife tells me every time I wear this one, because I've been wearing it a lot lately, it fills the room. I've dialed it back from five sprays to four with Percival because <laughs> five is just outrageous. And four has been plenty. This stuff's good. I just a little spritz just to smell it. I don't need to spray a big old full spray. It's already a crazy smell going on from shooting this video with the stuff I've sprayed so far. Percival, look, some people want to knock it, say it's too synthetic. It's too expensive to be that synthetic. It's as advertised with some of the, for me with some of the things you've heard over the years about this fragrance. Potent, versatile, mass appealing, fresh, Fruity, woody, a little bit of Ambroxan shower gel feel, compliment getter, does all those things. It really does. In my experience, it works. It's such a likable scent. It's one of those fragrances you spray it and forget it kind of thing, but not because you can't smell it, because it's just such an easygoing aroma that you just kind of forget about it and go on with your day. It's, you just have this pleasant scent bubble going around you. And based on my experience, because I've worn it like four or five times now, um, it's, it's crazy strong in projection and longevity. Might be my strongest parfums, the Marley fragrance. I'm, I was never expecting that when I got it. I was not expecting it to be this power. Maybe it's the way it reacts on my skin. I don't know. This stuff is a beast. I actually had to tone back the sprays from five to four, which I didn't really make much of a difference, but it made a little bit of a difference, I'm sure, because she hasn't been complaining about it giving her a piercing headache when I'm too close to her for too long, because this stuff is crazy strong. If you've yet to try it, I was definitely late to the game. Get yourself a sample, because if you're looking for a mass appealing monster performer, check out Parfums de Marley Percival. That's what I wore during the day. Then we got the shower. One of my all-time favorite cheap spring fragrances that I haven't worn in a while. I damn near bathed in this stuff the other night. I think I gave myself like 12 sprays. I did like six or seven and five or six more like two or three hours later because it doesn't last that long. Guess Man, the original. That green color is very fitting. It's super green. That fur balsam really stands out. A little bit of a fruitiness, but a lot more fresh and somewhat dense greens. I love the way this stuff smells. I have for many, many years. And it's one that gets lost in the fold. It kind of sits on the shelf, collects dust, got to dust it off. I saw it the other day and I said, man, I haven't wore that in a long time. I kind of strictly wear it in the spring and I usually don't wear it but once or twice in the spring. And uh, I was in the mood for it and I'll tell you, I, it's, it's synthetic. It smells cheap, all the good stuff, but there's just something about it. This is still my favorite guest man fragrance. My favorite guest fragrance is 1981 Los Angeles. But my favorite from this line, because I have like four or five of them now, it's still the original Guess Man. This stuff is so good to me. You may think it smells terrible if you've tried it before. Everything's subjective to each their own. But as far as cheap green fragrances, this might be my all-time favorite cheap green fragrance. Some just do the trick. And I'm glad I went back to it out the shower. I will be wearing it in the upcoming spring, because like I said, I traditionally wear it strictly in the spring. Out the shower, the original guest man. Moving into Thursday, I think this is gonna end up being my most worn fragrance of 2022. The juice level continues to drop. I continue to wear it almost weekly for the most part. I always go back to it. Uh, it's kind of becoming my favorite fragrance, I think, because I just wear it so much. I think this and Percival are gonna be my two most worn this year, at least starting the year out they are. The Haroff Signature Tabac. I just love this stuff. It's the most versatile tobacco fragrance I've ever worn. Works for everything. The quality's there. It's not too dense and too heavy, even though it's sweet, boozy, and tobacco, because it's got this airy, aromatic, herbal freshness to it. It's a leafy tobacco. There's a lot of aromatics here that kind of brighten it up a bit and just make it so, more, so much more wearable 
then your run-of-the-mill sweet tobaccos or heavily boozy tobaccos or very moist tobaccos that have a strong density because this is bright and airy, uplifting, pretty good projector in the first two hours, and then it has a nice little trail going after that for a few hours. It's not a crazy beast, but it's far from weak. It's in that very good above average performance across the board for longevity, projection, and sillage. It's just, like I said, based on wearings, it's kind of become my favorite fragrance. Um, even though Rosé, I still think is my favorite from the house because it's just so interesting to me. Um, I can't stop smelling myself when I wear it. I can't stop smelling my wife when she wears it. But Signature Tobacco is just, I don't know, it might be my favorite fragrance currently that I spray on my skin because it's just something about the way it smells on my skin. It's just, it's easy going, but it's smooth and refined. Like it's laid back, but it's like wearing a Rolex with a t-shirt. It's, you know what I mean? It's, ca it's casual and laid back but a little bit more refined. That's why I say I know that's an odd pairing and an odd explanation on what I mean with saying a t-shirt with a Rolex, but maybe it's like a $50 t-shirt with a Rolex. You know what I mean? It's uh, It's got a little bit of class and elegance. It's definitely masculine. It's a little bit more grown up without smelling like an old man. It works for everything. I wear it all the time. During the day, it's a hard off signature to back. Then I got the shower. I gave myself a lot of sprays of this gorgeous citrus bomb, Mercedes-Benz Cologne. I just go back to it from time to time. And this stuff is so good. So good. The hype has always been real in this. Oranges, lemons, grapefruit, just citrus medley. Not quite the lemonade smell, Dior Homme Cologne, but very similar. Performs a little bit better. A little more synthetic, sure. Uh, but it's my favorite citrus fragrance ever. Citrus dominated, super fresh. Yeah. My favorite citrus fragrance ever. I do have a backup 75 ml bottle because one day I'll go through this. Because when I spray it, I spray 10 plus sprays. I, I, ba I bathe in this stuff. Um, and it's pretty damn loud in that first hour when I do 10, 12 sprays. But damn it, I got to spray it again because it's just so good. I love smelling it. Easy going. Anybody can wear it. Everybody can like it. Beast, no. Solid performer, yeah, I get average performance. Six hour range, high heat, four or five hours, cooler weather, six, seven hours. It all depends. I spray my clothes with this one, everything. If you've been able to get your hands on a bottle, kudos to you. You know exactly what I'm talking about because this is some great stuff. This is a modern hype beast classic in my opinion. If you've yet to get a bottle, when they pop up and restock at these different discounters, try to jump on it because that stuff spreads like wildfire through the community online whenever they do restock and they sell out quickly. But out the shower, one of my favorites, Mercedes-Benz Cologne. Moving into Friday, one of my favorites long-term that I just haven't worn in a long time. I got a, I got a few bottles of this. I need to wear it more. For some reason, this is another one like Guess Man, just kind of, it's lost in the shuffle. The downside to a larger collection, the downside to constantly having things coming in. Great, polarizing, but great in my opinion. Fragrances like English Laundry Windsor. Get forgotten about. This is one of the older style bottles. This stuff really performs. This is every bit of nine, 10 hours on my skin and I don't need more than five or six sprays. It's a pretty heavy type of projection in the first two hours. The sillage on it's pretty dense and strong. Uh, there's a little bit of synthetic oud here that adds this warm wood smell, but it's mostly warm spice and this darker clove smell. If you don't like cloves, you won't like this. It's a mature smell. It's more a grown-up masculine smell. Some people could say old man, that's fine. Because uh, when it's clove heavy, some people just can't stand cloves. I, it's oddly attractive to me. I, I love that stuff. And it's very, very spicy. Very spicy. Dark warm woods, warm spicy. A little resinous, just a touch in the background on the dry down. But uh, this is some good stuff. How newer bottles perform, have no idea. I haven't bought a bottle of English Laundry in years now except for that loose bottle of Cambridge Night I have that doesn't perform like my old bottle. So that's what I have to go off of. So I have old bottles of English Laundry and I need to go back to them more. I still love the house. I still love these old bottles I have from the fragrances, but I just, I don't know, they get lost in the shuffle. Um, I know some of you found me from my English, English Laundry house talk video from, shoot, it's almost three years ago now since I did that video. And uh, this is that same bottle in that video. 
I love this stuff. I'm going to spray it again because I haven't worn it in a long time. It's really, really good. Does everybody like it? No. People have bought it off my recommendation and they're like, oh, I don't know how you like that. It's polarizing. It is not for everyone. So take it with a grain of salt. That's why I try to be as concise and very specific with how I describe it so you understand that it is mature. It's dark, warm, spicy, a little synthetic oud, and heavy on the cloves. Cloves are very distinctive. It's got, it adds this dirty warmth to it. But like I said, for me, oddly attractive. It was a joy to wear. During the day, an old favorite of mine. English Laundry Windsor. And then we got the shower on Friday and tonight on Saturday. I'm currently wearing this. This fills a room. Every time I've been wearing this one out the shower, uh, my wife said, tells me I smell like a pina colada. It smells like coconuts in here. Because it, it projects, especially in that first 30 minutes after I sprayed. It's only it's like four sprays around the neck. I actually, at night, I spray the front of my neck. And uh, yeah, it's really good. It's really believable. It is cocktails and catamarans from a scent journey fragrances guys you need to get a sample and try this one there are samples available this stuff is incredible oh, god it is so good this is one of the best fresh fragrances i've put my nose on in a long time that has some serious originality it does smell like a pina colada heavily but there's this melon vibe that comes in as it settles down because it's a blast of a bunch of different citrus and in the heart it gets much more juicy because there's some pineapple and melon in the heart of the fragrance but there's a medley of citruses and fruits up top with some aldehydes that add this beautiful crisp bright airiness to the fragrance the aldehydes really make this thing shine I have been digging the hell out of this out the shower. I can't wait for the summer to roll around because this is going to be heavy in the summer rotation. This stuff is fantastic. Get yourself a sample of this. Out the shower on Friday and Saturday. Cocktails and catamarans. Finally on Saturday, earlier today, I got a late start to my day. Went to the gym a little bit later than usual. Then we went to dinner. So after the gym, I took a shower and I went for one I haven't wore in quite a while that I typically don't reach for for dinner. And it was a hit. The wife loves it. I love it. I still say it's one of the best amber fragrances ever. That is Mason Francis Kirkjohn. Grand Soir. Alluring. Potent. Super intoxicating. Amber benzoin with some vanilla. But not redundant to Nishane Ani. At least not in my opinion. I find this is much more on the amber. Dusty, powdery, warm amber. Than it is on the benzoin and vanilla. Whereas... It's a lot of benzoin with Nishane Ani. It almost it has a booziness to it, the way the benzoin comes off to me with Ani. So some people may find it redundant. I find they have their differences more so than the redundancy, but to each their own with what you smell. Um, I would say get samples of both before you make a decision, because I don't think one's better than the other. Though if I had to lean towards one, it probably would be Ani, I guess. But this is no slouch. This stuff is incredible. It's super, super strong in the sillage. It doesn't push like crazy. After about an hour, hour and a half, it settles down. But it's something about this lingering trail that this fragrance has that I've had people... I, I, I had to be... The last time this happens, it was, happened, it was very distinctive. I was in a, a convenience store, and I had to be every bit of... 15 feet away from this guy after I had walked by when he finally said something. He said, ooh, somebody smells good. And I turned around. I said, what's the smell like? He said, kind of, kind of smell like vanilla. I said, that's me. So, and it, I mean, we were still in the same aisle, but I mean, that's just, that's crazy. That's crazy strong sea hush right there to have it hit somebody, you know, 10 plus feet away after you've walked by. That's a stout trail. This stuff as advertised, shout outs to my buddy Clifton. Clifton's the one that told me this stuff has a crazy trail. And uh, if you haven't tried this, sample worthy. In my opinion, one of, if my favorite amber fragrance ever, but one of the best amber fragrances out there. Francis Kirk John knows what he's doing. He's a master at this stuff. So during the day, Grand Soir is more so in the evening for dinner than during the day, really. And then, like I said before, came home, Decided to take another shower and uh, switch into my 
evening wear. I'm wearing my lounge joggers, this nice AEW hoodie shirt, and I am rocking cocktails and catamarans from Ascent Journey Fragrances again. This is just such an enjoyable laid back fragrance. I'm telling you guys, get a sample. I highly doubt you'll be disappointed if you get a sample. You're most likely going to end up needing a bottle because it's that damn good. Out the shower, cocktails and catamarans. Well, that was my rotation for week number 117. Until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback and I love hearing from you guys. Those of you that are familiar with this format, you know what I'm about to say next. I want to see what your rotation looked like. Let me know in the comments what you chose to wear this week, whether it was one fragrance or something different every day like I did. Did we match anywhere across the board? It doesn't have to be the same day, but like did somebody wear Percival this week? You know, uh, I like to read stuff like that. That's fun comments for me. And uh, I really appreciate you guys. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the fragrances I wore this past week and you give them a spray now, pretty damn confident you'll thank me later because if performance is important to you, it's a bunch of beasts in this rotation. Have a good one, guys. Mm -hmm.